So here we are again. And we need to give some titles. There's a bunch, and they're going to be more the greater in power we become. So for now we need a designated regent, who is a person who steps in taking over the government if we are unable to rule. This we're going to use the guy who likes us the most. You can sort by opinion here and see the information on why they are happy with us. So we're going to go with our bishop, select the court physician who has the highest learning is always good. Because he's going to try and heal us if we get injured or sick or something. Next are less important titles and those generally you use to improve the opinion of people. So this guy, he doesn't like us very much. But he's also really nothing, so it doesn't matter if he likes us or not. So rather, we're going to give a lot of titles to our bishop to improve the relations even further. Next, we're looking for the guys who have these icons here, because those are our uh, counselors who do things for us. And those we want to have a high opinion of us uh, too. So all of these are going to go to counselors. And we're going to target the ones that have the lowest opinion of us. So we get a good amount out of them. Right, the court tutor, you generally want someone who has a lot of really good traits. We don't have anyone like that, so we're just going to pick him, so people gain a good idea. Now, our commanders are not great. Um, these will lead our armies later on. As you can see, there is no army, because we're not at war, so we didn't need one, so we don't have one standing. Um, to get better commanders, generally, through the game, is you can, if you right-click your own portrait and click the explore character thing over here, you get this character finder. And you want to go for search all, and I have a filter prepared, but as you can see, the filter options. We want to see all men, those who are not in prison, married, doesn't matter to us. They can't be rulers, they should be in our diplomat uh, range, otherwise we can't interact with them. They should be willing to join our court, that is really important. Being my religion group and my culture group just helps with this. Uh, they should be an adult. They can be a great house, we don't uh, we don't bother. And then when you set all these, you can save it, like I did. So you can just, throughout the games, load it. Uh, sadly, you can't give them names, but it tells you kind of what these slots are. Basically, you have the same two, just this one is for men and this one is for women. Doesn't really matter. Now, these we sort by Marshall, because we're looking for good commanders. And already, we see two up here that are going to join our court, that are better than what we got. So let's let's send them an invite to our court. And they're going to now consider these requests once we unpause the game. And they're going to let us know whether or not they're coming. So we're taking care of all of this. And this is where we could or would start the game. We were going to do one last thing. We're going to check our military situation and put our counselors actually in, in effect. Because to wage war, we can pretty easily fight for certain things, but they cost various resources and they have, as you can see, a lot of things that are happening. So if we wanted to get tribute out of them, um, we can declare this war, which doesn't cost us all that much. Winning or losing a war, that is a different thing. That costs various things. So if we won a war for this, we gain 200 prestige and they become our tributary, giving us money and troops and everything. Uh, if we make a white piece, we lose 100 prestige and they gain a 100 prestige because they've beaten us. If we lose the war, we have to pay them gold. They gain a lot more prestige and we lose a lot more prestige as well. Doesn't really help. Now, we're not going to go through all of this, but um, this basically helps with the tribute. It's, it's same-ish, but a little bit different. Now, we could go aboard a dispute, so we get a claim on the county. But this costs a lot. It costs 100 gold to start the war, and 100 piety, which, both of which we don't have nearly enough. We don't have enough gold, nor do we have enough piety, and it's going to take a long time to build it up. So, for now, we're going to decide who we want to take over, and once we've figured it out, we're going to take our counselor 
and have him fabricate a claim here so we have each year a chance it's not large but a chance of generating a claim on their title which allows us then to attack for very little and get those counties under them now next thing we want is have our marshal since we're tribe we can organize raid which isn't too bad because that way we can go and yeah well as it says raid the countryside meaning at some point they're going to be troops spawn that are willing to raid or we could have him train our troops which gives us more troops to begin with and replenishes them quicker for now we're going to have him organize a raid similar over here several options we could build our legend which gives us monthly prestige as i said which is very important so we're going to do that just for this and there's a chance that he's going to raise warriors now those warriors that are raised are a little bit difficult because once they come they need to be used they need to go to battle if they don't they're going to riot so this we'll need to keep in mind the spy master honestly it's a good position to get rid of people but he's really good so we're going to send him to study technology if you click it it tells you all the green pieces is where there's much more technology than what you got the byzantines at this point in time are the most developed in all respects so we're going to send them to constantinople to spy and find technologies for us he's far away from home but i'm sure he's going to do a good job now <laughs> We could go and build some zeal, which gives us monthly piety, which isn't bad either. And it has a chance to raise zealots. Religious fighters coming to us. So all of this is now set up and we can unpause. The game has very speed settings. In the beginning, just two or three. I generally don't go above three. And this is the first event. This guy we invited to come to our court and he accepts our greatest invitation. So now we have someone to become a much better commander. I'm going to replace the lowest one we got with him who just accepted our invite. So the other one is not far behind. Oh, our betrothal was accepted. So now we might be able to form an alliance, which yes, we are lovely. And he has also agreed to come to our court. So we're going to have him be a commander. Now both of these are fairly old, so we'll likely have to replace them soon. Uh, especially since they don't have any heirs that might profit off of them. Right, so on the issue of forming an alliance close by, we already have an alliance with the Picts, so we are pretty safe. The Picts are quite strong compared to everyone around. This is really weak for this game, but strong for the time and the place. Now, to prevent a war being fought, and I feel like he might be our greatest threat around here. Actually, he doesn't have all that many troops, but he might be able to gain more troops. Nope, he's not even the strongest. He's much stronger and much more dangerous, therefore. So, we're going to sway his opinion with us we could send our diplomat to improve it but this kind of gives us another chance to improve the opinion that he has of us which then decreases the likelihood of him becoming aggressive toward us so this is what we're going to do right and this uh betrothal has also been accepted which is nice and he has accepted our proposal for an alliance now if we check in our own and look at the pacts we can see we have one alliance and several non-aggression pacts right one day at the market a strange man comes up to you and offers you to sell you to sell to you what he swears is the finger of saint john the baptist look at it carefully and it doesn't seem to be set of old human bones now we could go ahead and buy this and it's very useful to do so it only costs us 10 gold which is a fourth of what we have but relics give us quite long lasting bonuses over here in our treasury we're going to show it once we have bought it otherwise we could gain cynical which isn't a great trade to have not for us anyway so 
We've bought it, and now the finger of St. John is on our treasury. And this is really good. It's a quality 2 item, which gives us more bonuses than a quality 1 item. It gives us plus 0 wine monthly prestige, plus 0 5 monthly piety, and plus 1 learning. As long as we have it in our treasury. As you can see down here, this is the effect of all artifacts. So if you have more artifacts here, it's going to sum them all up so you get an easy overview of what you get. These are hard to come by early, so this was a real stroke of luck for us. Now, okay, these are events that sometimes pop up. And this comes out of our relationship with the King of the Picts. So pirates have been marauding in increasing numbers all along the coast of Omorain, which is our county. Worse, there's a rumor among the common folk that the pirates are being aided by Scottish agents. So we only have one option and we send him a letter about it and we're going like, well, man, what's up with those pirates? Are these yours? Now, something happened here and as I feared, one of our commanders was so old, he died immediately after his appointment. <laughs> so we could go ahead and just try and find someone else. Ooh, lovely. As you can tell, the game, there's a lot of things going on. Let's check for another... We need to reset this first because... The old events are still there, so let's get him. He's not great, but he's one better than the guy we got here. Alright. So, our spy, who's really good, has already succeeded. He, have, he has found some documents uh, giving us information on technology that we don't have. Technology is up here. And up here, there's points that we can spend on various things. There are things to go for and things to ignore, but he has earned us 50 in one of these trees. If we click it, we're going to see. He gets us 50 military technology points. Uh, this is part of the event chain. I'm actually going to slow this down. This is part of the event chain with the pirates. Let's talk about this for a second. If you hover over these, it tells you how much it costs in the second line. So, we need 357 points to upgrade this by one. We could already upgrade this, but we don't really have heavy infantry. How do we find out what type of military composition we have in our land? We hover over this. So, most of these are light infantry or archers. Not a lot of heavy infantry. We're a tribe, after all. And our vassals also have light infantry, mostly. Our vassals being townships and bishoprics in this. So, this is not sensible to do. We could afford it, but it doesn't make much sense. What we want to go for early on is military organization. It increases our morale, which is super important. The global supply limit, also super important. And the retinue size, also very important. So for this, we need 9.35 uh, 9 points more to afford it. So very soon. Let's turn to the Pirate King. Well... He answers, Chief Indretach, I must say I do not approve of the tone in your last letter, accusing others to try and obscure your own failings in keeping your own self. Safe only leaves you looking like a paranoid fanatic. I wish you speedy recovery from your paranoia. Signed King Kinoid the Second of Pictland. Right, okay. Um, we get a chance to answer in various ways. Now, bear in mind that while we want prestige, um, damaging our relation with him might be even worse. So, let's see. Let's see how the accusingly answer goes along. And this is, this is his sigil here, I think you can tell. So let's go with this. Every time an event, not every event, but most events pop up, the game is paused for you, so you can read and kind of discover what happens. There we go, another guy has chained and he becomes our commander immediately, leaving this away. So we have some fairly competent commanders. Up these messages, you really can ignore. People, other people really utilize all of this a lot. I generally don't, I just ignore it, kind of. It just exists, doesn't matter too much. Not to me anyway. Over here you see a lot of things that we're going to use throughout the game. Again, I'm not going to talk about what is here unless we actually interact with it. 
All right, so this this wasn't good. This wasn't good. This wasn't a good idea. So He tells us we're the worst kind of scum and he breaks our pact and uh, We lose 50 prestige So this wasn't great. This wasn't a good idea <laughs> Now Let's see our betrothal is still intact I believe yeah but we're not going to get an alliance out of it. So, yeah, that wasn't really good. Okay. So... Right, okay. This is an event chain from trying to sway the chief of Osraj. Which apparently is not a good idea. <laughs> we'll see how this works out. So, we do not even have a non-aggression pact with him anymore. Honestly, it's not sensible to keep the betrothal up. We're going to break it because the relationship is ruined already. Let's have our daughter do something sensible for us instead. And let's see who we can have. We could have a Pictish Duke. Who... Is... Who? I think it's him. Uh, no, who is this? Who is this? Green round thing. Who are you? Uh, let's go to him. I do not see his sigil, but maybe I'm blind. Who are you? More importantly, how many troops do you have? Why can't I get to him? <laughs> oh! He's this. He's, he's the most powerful duke over in Pictland. So, since we didn't get an alliance with the king, next best thing is probably the strongest guy in the kingdom. And... Let's check what else we got. What other options we have. Only really with him anyway. But his sons, rather. So who is your heir? Let's go with the heir. He is the heir to the High Chiefdom. You can see that in the second line, right under his name in yellow. So let's betroth them. It's going to be agreed upon. And this way, we get an alliance with someone who is pretty strong as well. Who might be able to help us out. As you can see, he holds most of Pictlin anyway. So let's form an alliance. As he would. So we could have stayed betrothed to the king of Pictlin, but... It wouldn't have helped us anyway. So that's fine. We're going to live with it. And... For now, not a lot is going to happen anymore. We're just going to go through events slowly build up, see where the game takes us. Because this is a really, really great example of something called emerging gameplay, or emergent gameplay, where the game builds a story, and our story has just gotten interesting because our wife died at the tender age of 35. Now, we already have an heir, and having multiple heirs as someone who can't really hold a higher title than he has currently, in this type of succession that we have, which is Noble Christian Chiefdom and our succession. Oh, we can actually change some here. Interesting. We're going to look at these in the next. Uh, for now, we want a new wife, but we don't want a new heir. So what I said about choosing an heir for our son is reversed. Uh, we want to find actually the oldest one possible, who has also the best traits. And she's pretty good. She's Old, but she has plus 15% fertility, which isn't the greatest. Not the greatest source, but her traits might already offset it. Um, our age doesn't matter all that much. He's going to become a dad throughout most of his life, really. So choosing someone really young won't help either. We could go for something that gives us an alliance and boost the stuff that we want, like more martial. So... She is of, uh, what tribe, of what tribe is she? 
Let's find the tribe. Uh, can't see that anywhere. Chief of Konachta, which might be something below. Hmm. All right. So let's just move to where she is. And zoom in and move to where she is. Uh, it's this one. I believe. Is it? Yeah, yeah. It's this one. It is this chiefdom. So... We sort by age again. And... Honestly, let's go with the one that has good traits. Uh, oh, nope. We lose a lot of prestige because she's just uh, a baroness. No, not even. She's a patrician. So that's not really good for us. So we're definitely not going to marry her. We don't need to make ourselves better. So let's go for her. Out of which we get a little bit, plus a new non-aggression pact with someone close by, which we might turn into an alliance, which is good. So let's do this. And unpause so we can see that we get to form the alliance as well. There we go. So now we can form an alliance with him. And he's this. And he has... Well, at least 318 once his troops are all full up, which isn't the worst. Honestly, every little bit helps this early in the game, so don't turn your nose up on 300 troops possibly coming to your aid. And we're going to look at our succession laws next because these might not be able to change soon, so we'd like to make sure this works out.